Hi, this is Private Your Station. Today we're bringing you day 434 of Russian invasion into Ukraine. As always, with former advisor to the office of the President of Ukraine, Lieutenant Colonel Alex Rostovich, and Russian opposition politician and lawyer Mark Fagan. Today's special thanks go to our supporters, Bill S., J. Murr, and Mormule. Thank you guys for sticking with us and making this channel possible. And with this, day 434. Dear friends, glad to see you all on Fagan Live. It is Wednesday, 3 minutes past 10, day 434. Good evening, Alexei. Good evening, Mark. We have about 100,000 watching us, about 20,000 click the like button. Please continue clicking links to that stream, uh, sharing it with your social media and your conversations and your forums wherever you discuss politics. Make sure those who need to see that do see that. For, do not forget to subscribe to Fagin Live and to Alexei Rostovich, as well as Private Here Station if you are listening or watching that in English and have not subscribed yet. All right, with that out, let's start. The main topic is the event that happened last night with two UAVs that uh, struck Kremlin. We can see a short video, there is no sound there, we can talk about it. You, of course, saw it before, you've seen the explosion. Let's address the technical side of it. How significant of a hit is that? Mark, it is difficult to give any number, any kilos of TNT or whatever was there. It's not even clear if the UAV exploded, if it dropped something and then exploded or hit something. The main thing is the content of this event. From my point of view, it's a clear provocation from Kremlin. Why? On Due to some of reasons. First of all, Ukraine doesn't benefit from this escalation. How? Because we need systemic support of our counteroffensive. And you think this uh, position might suffer in the West? Well, look, just uh, on the outcome of it, the amount of apologies, uh, first of all, American leaders have to make in the aftermath of this event, it characterizes that event saying that uh, we do not really support events like that. And our counteroffensive does need support. Today they were going to announce another support package for another 300 million. And, for example, Germany came out uh, and said that Germany doesn't support the use of German arms on Russian territory. Milley came out in the United States and said that escalation is not desirable and we understand the position and he explained why because they're not uh, looking to fight directly with Russia and to escalate this conflict. And it was mentioned in different uh, addresses today that Ukraine, first of all, is not interested in increasing the scale of this war, because hypothetically, if we take NATO and Russia fighting this war on the territory of Ukraine, then the events happening here will become more destructive. And Milly was pointing at that. And we are not interested in increasing this war. Um, so the scale of this war, and this is not Ukraine, and this is outside the usual jokes of uh, somebody smoking, that's not us. No, this is definitely not us. And I see that as a provocation on the eve of counteroffensive to try to affect political opinion on the West and perhaps uh, slow down the support that is coming, at least uh, to a little degree, and perhaps perhaps also explain why they would not be holding the parade on Red Square on the 9th of May, why Putin was not going to be out in public on that event. And we are launching a poll here right now. We're trying to do it every stream now. So the question today is, will the hit by UAVs and Kremlin affect the counteroffensive in a negative way? 92% think no, it won't. 8% think yes, it will. Well, Kremlin, of course, cannot be convinced in anything 
even if they devised this provocation by their own accord. Mark, Mark, let's address it in an orderly fashion. Nobody is explaining and nobody is apologizing. There are international criminals in Kremlin who are in the leadership of Russia and counteroffensive is not dependent on their statements and on that. Uh, it's just this event doesn't give us any advantages and it might be giving us uh, somewhat a negative influence. However, looking at the support that we're getting, even that didn't work out. But we think that the ideation by Russian side is rather clear. We'll also look at the parade and what happens on the 9th of May there in Moscow, but I suspect strongly that Putin has a way out to not be at that parade or to not even hold it. Yeah, so he has a legal or justifiable option to not be in the square, right? Yep, it was going it was going in that direction, and since the parade itself has a big political capital, he would need to explain why he is not tapping into this capital. So here is the explanation. There is some danger and there are UAVs. And again, behind that, you can see the ghost of their threats of nukes, because uh, immediately after the that Minister of Defense of Russia came out and said that our nukes are to be used for defense of our territory, then Balodin came out and uh, was screaming out that yes, let's let's drop nukes on Kiev, um, and it looks like it's usual style. They gave all their talking heads different lines. The official ones have it more stable, more uh, reserved as statements, and the unofficial ones uh, were given the screaming lines, let's uh, crash and burn everything. So it's a typical PSYOP that Kremlin is usually doing, and they are trying to address whatever they can. Political side, perhaps raise the stakes there, and um, it's, yeah, like, basically are looking for ways to do something about our counteroffensive, and that's one of those somethings. And Evil Tanks today were discussing that situation on the front is not going in their favor, so um, our, our military leadership in Ukraine have not confirmed much of it, but we are addressing what they write in Russia. A uh, Russian news agency came out and said that in Zaporozhye, uh, an armored group decided that on, from the Ukrainian side attempted to storm Russian positions and already lost a tank. So, yeah, Mark, they, they're trying to affect the information field. The that same thing with the, with the UAV, that same thing with the injections of uh, their military commentary. Um, at the same time, they are still shelling. We uh, did, we defeated some of the uh, Shahid's drones last night that were flying at us uh, in Kherson and Zaporozhye. They were attacking our cities and we got 16 more dead and 40 wounded. So. It's also the usual, if you look at that, they are trying to play everything with one action. Try to explain Putin's disappearance on the 9th of May, trying to attack uh, certain aspects of the counteroffensive in the political area. Well, they're criminals. They started with blowing up their own people back in 1999 on Kashirka and Guryanova. So that's expected. And yeah, that uh, favorite alcoholic came out, uh, Medvedev, and said that after today's terrorist act, there is no uh, other way but uh, physical destruction of Zelensky and his team, probably including you and me. And we do not need Zelensky to sign any surrender declaration. Uh, he's just an asshole. What can I say here? Okay. So, if do you think they will try to do something? Because even if it is their provocation, do you think they'll put some jets in the air and do another strike or try to attack Kyiv. Yeah, they already did, Mark, last night. Do you think they'll do it again today? Um, yeah, they can. They can probably use their remaining uh, dagger missiles if they have the supersonic ones. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they could try. If they try to hit Kyiv, in all likelihood will intercept whatever is... Uh, flying in that direction. Do you expect them to maybe escalate in the tactical nukes level? No, no, Mark, for God's sake. If it was any tactical nukes preparations, uh, 
the United States and China would have noticed it already. You can imagine what uh, rhetoric would come out of those countries, because China is against anything nuclear. The West is also against, but the, yeah, they can threaten the West. China is seriously against it, and Russia is not in the mood of uh, threatening China. So, remember, we went through that when we hit Mos the cruiser Moscow and sank it. I was 100% sure that they will hit Kyiv. And what? But do you think they wanted to hit uh, Zelensky's office? Yeah, I think they did, but uh, they even had a good excuse back then. At least a tactical to demonstrate something, because back then everybody were still under the impression of a scary Russia. So they could have maintained that by doing it, but they didn't. But to increase the degree, to scare, to put a possible equal sign between Ukraine successes on the counteroffensive and possibility of use Russian nukes. This is yes, this, this they can do. They like to scare public opinion and they like to try to affect uh, the Western media and uh, population with that. But we'll be trying to dispel all these motions. So you are talking about uh, consolidation of the West in stating attacking Russian soil is undesirable. I'd say there are also other voices. Blinken, yeah, Anthony Blinken came out and said uh, in an interview to Washington Post that United States leave Ukraine the right to attack Russia and uh, in the term of this campaign and in uh, flow of this war because military targets are legit targets. And is Kremlin a military target? Well, it's more of a symbolic target because uh, what are you going to be attacking there? It's more of a structure symbol. From the military side, you want to destroy the place where they make decisions, uh, infrastructure that transfers these decisions. In this case, Kremlin is not exactly the target. It's more of a propaganda target and it doesn't have military value. So it is not uh, to our advantage to attack targets like that. Okay, 214,000 are with us, 63,000 click the like button. Let's go to the map, we are somewhat limited. Alexei is en, en route, traveling again, so we'll try to go over everything quickly. All right, we are showing the map, it's on the screen. You heard Prigozhin mention that Ukrainians started counteroffensive. I don't know if he talked about Zaporozhye or other direction. No, he was talking about Bakhmut. So he's saying that Ukrainian is uh, pushing forward and apparently they have enough shells and they're fighting effectively against him. Our military command has not confirmed that and it's only precaution statements that his troops are getting pressured by Ukrainian military. So we'll probably see that in the next few days once we hear the official statements. And when the map changes uh, the outline, so what about Zaporozhye? Yeah, they did mention Arekhov and they said that there was some action there. But Mark, if uh, even if we were doing stuff there, we would need to hold a little bit. Let events unfold uh, and information of that caliber will be up in the media, maybe within 24 hours. So when we'll be talking on Saturday, there'll be a lot of things understood. It'll be all clear by that time. So, Arekhova is generally direction of Takmak and Militopol. Takmak, probably. Uh, Militopol is more to the west. I mean the general direction. Yeah, general direction is. But if we're talking military maneuvers, that could be a, that could be a secondary maneuver. That could be a deceiving one to attract more attention. Because that's why our military command is keeping quiet, because uh, you never announce the main direction, the secondary direction. So can you tell me why in Kherson there were so many victims? I did not track exactly what they used, but they hit the, the center, they hit the downtown. And they shelled from 
the left bank, right? Yeah, they did. I also heard the version of S300, and I heard that uh, 16 dead, 45 wounded, and the numbers are still growing. So yeah, they hit a uh, very high populated civilian area. Okay, our poll is going on. Today we're asking if UAV hit on Kremlin will preclude the unfolding of counteroffensive of Ukrainian military or will affect it negatively. We're not connecting that directly, that it's done by Ukraine. We're just asking if this event will affect counteroffensive in a negative way. 93% are voting no. It won't. And I'll vote the same way to Mark. Okay, 40,000 plus left their voices. Um, Zelensky visit, visits Finland today. He basically visits a country that was uh, accepted by NATO and um, is voted to be accepted. So it is symbolic. Ukraine is going to repeat the same way as Finland did. And uh, yeah, of course, it is very transparent. And we're already discussing the Northern Coalition, Sweden, Finland, and several other Northern neighbors. They already said that they are supportive of Ukraine joining NATO. And all this happening on the eve of Vilnius summit in June. And this is the discussion that is going around it. When, how, what the terms are. And uh, all these countries were destroying, the, dispelling the resistance of the skeptics, the ones that uh, were saying Ukraine will never be a member of this organization. And it also... being uh, discussed about his visit to Berlin, right, to Germany. So, German side announced that Zelensky will visit Berlin. And there are no details, really. There are details that he is visiting. It's not uh, enough information. If you're talking security, they're not telling when. Well, Russia is, th is threatening to kill Zelensky. <laughs> Russia killing Zelensky in Germany, the NATO country. Good luck. Um, I don't think we need to worry about that. So, you think this all may be connected to the arms supply as well? His visits to Germany? Because there were conversations and mentions that Ukraine is uh, has some artillery hunger on the eve of uh, counteroffensive. European Union announced that they will be giving us more. And they also announced that they will be producing 152 millimeter uh, caliber shells, which uh, we're still using a lot. We have a lot of those uh, guns in service. So there is support. And look, the main Russian narrative, which uh, was supported by many Western experts, by the way, to increase the degree on the media, because this is, uh, they, they were playing with it, saying that this is the last counteroffensive in the West, is the last uh, event that the West supports, and there'll be nothing else. But look at the degree of support. It's going, it's increasing. They're accepting new uh, packages. The United States is sending 300 millions worth and more missiles for HIMARS, uh, artillery ammo, artillery shells. European Union coming out and saying that long-term will be supplying Ukraine with uh, ammo as well. So I suspect the visit of President is uh, definitely support for counteroffensive, support of uh, pre preclusion of Vilnius summit and the aspect of uh, voting for Ukraine being in NATO, and possibly discussion of uh, sanction packages against Russia. European Union announced that uh, they're working on the 11th package, and the task of that is to shut down all the loopholes and gray schemes that allows Russia to still get uh, products of dual use. So they're also talking about hardening sanctions. Ukraine announced more sanctions about uh, Russian companies, government organizations and personal sanctions. And as we know, that usually translates into international sanctions later, they become the legal precedent for the international sanctions. 
So the work continues. All these uh, scary screams about the last counteroffensive, everybody's tired, won't be going on. Well, let's just freeze this war. These are just screams in the media. They have very little relation to the facts. And the facts are statements made by sides, adding new packages and new supplies and new nomenclature. It's only increasing. Ammo support, it definitely doesn't look like an attempt to stifle our capability to resist and to fight this war. This is aimed at increasing our capability. And I'll continuously show here that the West is only increasing their support. If need be, there'll be a second counteroffensive, a third counteroffensive, but first let's play out the first one. All right. So, look, the story with uh, Putin visiting South Africa. As uh, an international military criminal, this story still is being discussed in the media, apparently a part of National Congress in Africa is interested in his arrival and today some of them came out and said one of their leadership uh, came out and said uh, that the question of uh, immunity of government officials on the international arena needs to be resolved basically pointing at the jurisdiction uh, of this matter and yeah here i found it in the news that they're trying to address the question of immunity to provide in some legal defense from the orders of international criminal court and it was uh, the statement was made by ronald lamola the representative of the ministry of justice of south africa so do you think putin will not go in this situation because he's kind of hiding in kremlin Mark, let me devalue that. All these statements by the media and uh, Washington Post and other Western colleagues, it is nothing but internal discussion and attempt to address the matter from different angles. And South Africa made a statement uh, to get into the international media. Who would ever quote him on the international arena? Probably nobody, right? So he's making a statement, he's getting into the limelight, he's getting some attention and some discussion. If they want to capitalize on the possibility of Putin's visit, sure, let them do it. It doesn't mean that he will ever visit them. Take Russian, take Russian media, unknown UAVs attack Kremlin. Now imagine the threats that their presidential flight will be facing because they'll have to land and refuel, they'll have to fly over something, right? South Africa is pretty far away and it needs to land in one of the countries. Uh, most of them, they do support Roman statute. So it is too complicated of a logistics task with a lot of issues, with a lot of security issues and transport technical complexities. So all that is just discussion for discussion's sake. The discussion of the West, do we need to support Ukraine? Do we need to define the goals of this war for Ukraine? This is just not our culture, right? We usually used to the statements that if official leaders come out and make a statement, that's usually a done fact. They're usually going and doing something. And here, that's more of a discussion. And in Ukraine, for example, we differ. We, we only make the statements, usually make the statements when we're going that way. Uh, we are not in the habit of discussing things from all these different angles. And uh, like in Ukraine, our internal culture is still uh, blowing up when we start discussing all the different uh, cultural and economic aspects of joining the European Union. Um, it's all right. Or we're just commenting. Okay. Um, 24 minutes. Uh, 200 plus thousands are with us. Almost 100,000 click the like button. And the question is, 
do you think UAV attack will affect the counteroffensive? 6% think yes, the rest think no, it will have no effect. Of course, this is uh, not a scientific poll, but this is an interesting taking of a temperature of our audience. So look, you commented this other news today, and it does have some value. I will explain why. Belarus court gave eight years to ex uh, eight years in colony Roman Protasevich for a conspiracy against leadership, against power, political power, and two more uh, related people to this uh, news also got their terms. Um, so that was a flight. Remember a story when they landed the flight in Belarus uh, with him and Sapega, his uh, girlfriend, I guess, um, the citizen of, of Russian Federation. And she was transferred to Russia, according to the agreement. And he jumped off their relations. And that's not the only thing that he did. He basically shot on all the Belarus opposition. And uh, to say the least, he displayed a very cowardly behavior. Some people are saying that he was tortured and was uh, pressured. I don't know the details, but I suspect that he was pressured. Okay, so regardless, he wavered at first, then he really started uh, saying whatever they wanted him to say. And now I think he completely gone bonkers. And here's the thing, when we end this conflict, when we end this war, there will be no excuses for that. People die on the front defending, defending their freedom and let's discuss him. Mark, on the human side, I do feel pity for him. Um, he's a young fella, I don't know, he probably wasn't even tortured much, probably was scared enough and he just gave up everybody uh, all his friends, um, comrades he worked with, uh, his girlfriend, he gave up himself. And as a result, he got seven years in prison. So this is uh, Lukashenko's regime. They probably promised him amnesty for cooperation. But now he'll probably be explained that, look, others will get 18 to 20 years and you only get eight. So two lessons. First of all, Lukashenko regime showed again what they are. Nobody should uh, even think that they are something different and we understand what needs to happen with them as the result of all this uh, war and the outcomes. And the second is uh, the old lesson. A Roman doesn't pay the traitors. Or like, remember when uh, somebody suggested for Napoleon to give an order to a spy, he said no better with money. So, I want to intervene here. We don't know if he actually will be uh, serving the sentence. There'll be there'll be uh, appeal to that. And uh, just an example: an Arfa player, a music player, Maria Kolesnikova, she got even harder sentence and did not uh, rat on her people, did not uh, change her position. Mark, there are a million of people in Belarus who suffered beatings, who suffered physical humiliation, physical abuse. And I have friends who went through that in the 90s uh, in Belarus uh, special services and prison system, and they never bent, never broke. Even though they have scars on their psyche and the body, the traces of real torture. But, you know... People are different, and I still feel pity for that guy. Mark, and speaking of, yeah, I also have a criminal proceedings against me in Belarus. Oh yeah, I know, you're a terrorist, right, right. We understand that. It just, I feel on the human side, I feel pity for a person who gave everything up, who ratted on everybody, and then he was deceived at the end. But wait, why did he put his, threw his girlfriend under the bus? Yeah, true, this is a horrible step. Right, I understand. I understand if he would be bargaining for his life, but... Yeah, uh, on, again, on the personal side, I understand legal and all things, but the man who 
gave up his girlfriend, waited on her to expunge uh, his own um, criminal proceedings, or at least to for for a promise to do that. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's a sad story. And this is a kind of a eternal values, eternal examples here. See, friends, if you it's a good example for those who may face the criminal system. See, even if you give everything up and everybody up, at the end they will still stick a shovel of uh, or whatever they use now these days uh, up your nether regions and torture you and they will not give you anything that they promised. So perhaps it's better to just uh, get out, go, go down fighting and keep the spirit and the good word about yourself. Remember that uh, soldier who said glory to Ukraine before being shot from a machine gun. Yeah, he is in uh, times, he is a figure. All right, um, 265,000 are watching us, 91,000 clicked the like button. Actually, no, yeah, we did not get to 100,000. That's why I'm leaving, Mark, right. <laughs> yeah, Alexei has a very short stream today, so he has to go. We are concluding the polling. 69 almost thousand voted and said that 96%, 94% think it will not. See, our dear viewers need to continue clicking the like button. Before we go, let's tell them each like is plus 10 to recommendations. To those people who scroll through news, they will see the link to that stream. So by not clicking like, you are precluding others from seeing it. Please do that. Do not forget to click that. Anyway, subscribe to Fagin Live, to Alex Aristovich, and to the Privateer Station if you have not done that yet and are watching or listening that channel in English. All right, we'll see you on Saturday. And a lot of interesting surprises are waiting for you. Oh, yes. So definitely wait till Saturday to come here. We'll see you then. Bye, Alexei. Good luck.